How are LED walls like this delivered? And what does the unboxing process look like? In this video today, we're gonna to be unboxing and building the LED wall behind me. Austin is gonna be unboxing and building the LED wall behind me because I wasn't here. And at the very end, we're gonna remove the blur and reveal this wall to you guys. And also, for all of you tech spec nerds out there, this wall is from Ro. It's their BP2V2. We've been loving it so far, but first, let's back up and set it up. Inside these boxes here are the same LED tiles that were used to film The Mandalorian. Now, we get asked about LED walls a lot on this channel. But what we've never really covered is how these massive LED panels are shipped and how they arrive at your door. Let's open up these crates and see what's inside. So all the flight cases are gonna be broken down into pretty much three categories. You're gonna have one box that's full of cables, all of the power cables and data cables you need to connect the LED tiles together. Another box is gonna be full of the support system. So for these LED wall tiles, you're gonna need a ground support system, and that's gonna be in one of these boxes. And the other flight cases are gonna be full of brand new LED wall tiles. Now these cables are what's called true one to true one cables. And what they do is daisy chain the LED tiles together when they're stacked on top of each other. So what it allows you to do is pass power through each of the LED wall tiles. You can have several LED tiles connected together via true one cable and then have one that gets plugged into a wall or a generator of some kind. And these are the ethernet cables. This just passes the data from the computer to the LED tiles. You got these wild looking clamps, which essentially connect the LED tile to the support system that gets built. This stops it from falling over. Now inside another one of these flight cases is all of the supports. What they are are basically metal support structures that stand behind the LED wall and allow you to clamp the LED to the support. Ground support is only recommended upwards of 16 feet. After that, you're gonna need some sort of ceiling support. In the flight cases, you're gonna get ground support options. Now, these go on the ground, and these are what the LED tiles get stacked up on. Then you have the back support for the ground support here, and then you get these, which go right in here, and you can actually make it go even higher by stacking on another one. Now, depending on how big your LED wall is, is gonna determine how many of these support bars you actually need. And now, for the best flight case of all, and the most important part of this video, the actual LED wall tiles. Each of the LED tiles are stacked in here so perfectly, so they won't get damaged during transport. And this is the actual LED tile itself. How beautiful is that? Now that you've seen what it looks like when your LED wall tiles arrive, we're gonna show you how to build one. So I wanted to take a moment to mention the most important part about building your LED wall from the ground up, leveling. No matter how big the size of the LED wall, you wanna make sure that you have a solid and level base. So every LED wall is gonna come with some sort of support system but for the majority, they're likely gonna come with a ground support system. If you have anything less than 16 feet, ground support's gonna be the way to go. Anything above that, you're gonna require ceiling support and some rigging points in your building. But for this case, we're gonna talk about ground support. So for ground support, you're gonna have these base bars and they're gonna pretty much act as little L shapes. Almost every LED manufacturer is gonna come with some sort of self-leveling system. Usually two legs in the front, and then on the back, you're gonna have perpendicular leveling support system. You're gonna make sure you level everything on the X axis and everything on the Y axis. Because the number one most important thing is to have this LED wall on a straight structure. Or else, going upwards, you're gonna have LEDs crash into each other and it's gonna cause damage in the long run. You're gonna be so excited to build it right away. Trust me, we've been there, we understand. But the most important thing you have to remember is that you're building this for the long term. And if you don't build it right the first time, you're gonna start seeing the seam between the LEDs, and that's gonna defeat the entire purpose of virtual production. So that is why leveling is the most important part of this process. You know, a little detail that we notice about these row tiles is that the base support system actually tells you where you're supposed to put the ground support depending on the certain type of LED tile that you have. Now, 
For someone like Roe, who has tons of different LED tiles, they actually show you exactly where you need to put the support beams and how far away they need to be from your LED wall so you get the maximum amount of ground support. Another note on top of that is sometimes you order these LED tiles directly from the manufacturers and sometimes they don't have the best manuals. So having this visual representation of where everything needs to go makes the build extremely doable. And here we have our LED wall. It is big, it's beautiful, it is sturdy, and most importantly, it's level. But the big question still remains, how do we turn it on? So unlike a big screen TV or a giant monitor, there is legitimately no power button on this LED. It's just raw LED. So how do we power it on? Do we even have enough power to power it? I got something to show you guys. If you just plan on installing a, an LED wall like this, how big is this thing? It's like 20, it takes up the whole wall. Anyway, if you plan on doing this in your studio, one thing that you might need to recognize is that you won't have enough power, you won't. So what we did was installed an entire new grid and all of these are individual circuits that run to our board. Let's go take a look at that. And this is how you dock, so no, I'm just kidding. The mainframe. Look at this. All of these are our new LED wall. If you want the real guide on this, just check, check Rose website. They have a great guide for how much power you need. Output. I'm not an electrician, okay? Thanks, Josh. So every single one of these LED tiles have a power in, a power out, a data in, and a data out. So how many LED tiles that you daisy chain to each other depends on a few things. For power, assuming you're gonna be using this LED wall at 100% brightness, which you likely never will, but sometimes you might, you wanna have at least, at the absolute maximum, 10 LED tiles daisy chained to each other. So that means we're going to have nine of the LED tiles all connecting to each other via daisy chain, and then we're gonna have one output going directly into the outlet. For the data cables or the ethernet ports, the connectivity map looks a little different depending on the bit rate that you want to achieve with your LED wall. For 12-bit, you can connect up to 10 LED tiles together. For 10-bit, you can connect up to 13 LEDs. And for 8-bit, you can connect up to 16 LED tiles together. What I mean by that is you're daisy chaining up to 16 LED tiles together to achieve a certain bit rate. Now, you can change the bit rate in the computer, but ultimately it's gonna depend on the type of processor you have and the amount of inputs you have on that processor. Because we're using a Brompton S4, we only have four inputs. And based on the amount of LED tiles we have, we can plug in up to 13 LED tiles per group. So once you've daisy chained all of the data cables, you're gonna have four master outputs for the data for each group of LED tiles that you've connected together. All four of them are gonna go into this processor. For us, we have a Brompton processor here. This essentially acts as the power button to the LED wall. If I wanna turn it off, I just hit this blackout mode. If I wanna turn it back on, I turn it off. So your power's plugged in, your data's plugged in, your processor's set up, and now you are ready to use your LED wall. Three. Two, one. So now we have our connectivity map done. How we have configured them is 12 LED tiles, 12 LED tiles, 11, and then 10. That is just the best way it made sense for us to connect them all together to achieve the highest bit rate with the amount of inputs that we have on our Brompton processor. So we've got it powered up, which is sweet. Um, can't put an environment on it yet just because we haven't tracked our Moses, but one thing that we can do is use it basically as a massive LED screen and get a cool background on it. Uh-huh. And... Whoa! Okay. Yo, Woody, what's up, man? Shout out to whoever made this. I'll put it right there. All right. The wall. Danielle, what do you think? It's a wall. And I like the wall. Like, it's a good wall. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to find someone else to. To ensure that Sarah, he's going to love this, 
He's obsessed with Ryan Gosling. I don't fully understand it, but I'm not even gonna put a plate. I'm just gonna put his face. <laughs> Something to show you. All right, I got you. Cl close your eyes. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. All right, you can look in three, two, one. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think, dude? <laughs> oh, uh, my turn, sorry. I was just doing some electrical work back here. Configuring. Obviously, we're super excited to have this LED wall. We have so many plans for series and individual videos that are coming your way very soon. So please subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll see you right away.